Yo, what is up, Cup Check audience? Welcome to the first ever fantasy football episode here on the channel. We are here with new co-host, new staple to the show, Will Range. Will, how are you doing today? Good, good. How are we doing? Excited to be on. Yes, sir. So we we have added Will to the show. He is a bit of a fantasy football expert. Uh, Will, tell us a little bit about your background in the fantasy world. Yeah, so, I mean, growing up, we're all baseball guys. Um, just something where I've been doing fantasy football since I was 12 years old with my dad and something that I've understood more, um, kind of, you know, got the hang of it more and, you know, finished top four, always made the playoffs. Haven't won yet. New to the, new to the new league with these guys, but um, haven't, I've never missed the playoffs ever. So. Yeah, so uh, so building off of what Will said, obviously, uh, recently joined our league a few years back been a pretty competitive staple in our fantasy football league ha- had a lot of success winning his other leagues I'll add but uh yet to win over in the cup check expert league but uh he's he's always a competitive guy always has some good draft insight uh just just been taken down by uh Christian McCaffrey the last few years I, I believe you had him uh the year he was like the consensus number one and uh, I don't think last year but so probably the year before yeah last year was Dalvin Cook too guy was out a lot too it's just it's always, I always get screwed by my first two picks. I'm, I was a guy that always went by the rankings, you know, stuck with the rankings, went with it, and it's always screwed me. And now, uh-oh, he's flexing. <laughs> yeah, so I'm uh, just building off that a little bit. Obviously, we got the brophy over here. Uh, this trophy goes to the baseball and the football winner. So kind of exchange his hands. And uh, over here, you can see I'm the 2016 champ, the 2019, and the 2021 champ. So... I've had a bit of success in the fantasy football realm and uh, obviously will will be uh, we'll be trying to win this one day. I think this year's my year, obviously a pretty tough one, but this could be his year. So, yeah, Uh, without further ado, let's kick it off today. We're going to be breaking down the first round, uh, just looking at ESPN's early rankings for standard PPR leagues. So yeah, well, what do you think of uh, Dalvin Cook all the way down at 10? That just that's that just seems kind of criminal to me. Uh, well, on face like, value, like we, like we touched on earlier, it was one of those things where it's like injury prone, you know, in those rankings, they screw them. And it's one of those things where it's high risk, high reward. So I don't think he should be at 10 personally. But then again, I'm changing my philosophy this year. All my other leagues, when I don't go on rankings, are going good. I do better. I'm switching that over to this league. And I think Dalvin Cook is, you know, minimum top eight potential top five top four fantasy football PPR we're doing PPR so got to put that in the factor I think Kirk Cousins has a great year Justin Jefferson came off a great year they you know they have all these weapons he's gonna expand his workload and I think he's gonna be he's better than 10 personally. yeah and you know uh kind of working off what you said that's gonna be the beauty of you joining the show because uh if you haven't had your own rankings in years of past uh you're definitely gonna have them this year so just yeah. kind of being on the show and, uh, you know, watching the show, obviously you're going to pick up a lot of it, but being on the show really forces you to really dive in and uh, form your own opinions, really research. And obviously the more time you spend researching and preparing, the better off you're going to be for the draft. So, so yeah, uh, as far as what I see looking at uh, kind of the back half of the first round, we see Dalvin Cook at 10, Devonte at nine, Najee eight, to me, um, I'm, I'm really going to have to spend some more time kind of breaking down my running back rankings. But for me, I'm going to have a hard time thinking Najee Harris is all the way down at eight because uh, that man just like elevated my team last year. I got him around like pick 18 or 17. So so obviously a league winning pick right there, pretty much uh, mm-hmm. being able to pair Najee with another first round draft pick from last year. So. Uh, I just remember the guy put up like 30 or 40 to secure my dub in the championship last year. So always going to have some love for Najee. And I know from just like listening to interviews and stuff, he he is a grinder. He's, he's not like a lot of these guys who he's just sitting with his money. He's content. Najee's always in, uh, always in the training room. I think they said he actually spent the night <laughs> uh, at the stadium one time last year, which to me is just shows like the guys in it. Uh, he loves what he's doing and, uh, it's going to be tough, man. I, I think I would actually pick Najee over the number seven pick Derrick Henry. What do you think of that? Will? see, I think that's where we disagree. So 
you know, everyone knows about the whole offseason thing that the Titan, you know, with the draft and stuff, traded away Jay Brown, you know, drafted a new QB, drafted a new wide receiver. You know, they're it lo- almost like they're, they're kind of reshaping in a way. And I think they per- they drafted Malik Willis out of Liberty. I think they took him in the third round. I think they did, did that for a reason. I think it was a steal. And I think Malik Willis is kind of like a Lamar Jackson-esque type quarterback. And I think they're going to swift through, you know, a lot of their – recent it seemed like the recent um offensive strategy was shotgun pass run heavy you know I think now they're going to move into a lot of option you know play action type type um type offense and just move the ball around I think DK's workload's not going to be affected I think he's going to get more passing opportunities and I think his value in my opinion I think he's I think he's going to be a top five I think he's worth more than Najee Harris but obviously you know you know they got Robert Woods coming in um Ryan Tannehill's, you know, kind of at the end of his career, you know, they saw the press, him saying that he's not here to, he said that he's not here to um, teach Malik Willis, he's here to compete with him. And I think that's going to, that spiked a lot of fire Malik Willis. And I think Tennessee, you know, with Mike Brable, they're going to do a lot more this season. And I'm like, I'm excited for a lot. I'm a Titans fan at heart. So yeah, I, I was I, just getting ready to say, yeah. I mean, that's great insight. We have a, we do have a Titans fan uh, sitting across from me over here. So Definitely a guy that follows the team and uh, always very high on Derrick Henry, as he, as he should be. I mean, he yep. he is one of the greatest talents out there. And and so much of the first round is just not messing it up, you know, finding the guy mm-hmm. who who's going to be there in week 16. I mean, that's that's kind of the tough thing is just finding the guy that's going to be there at the end of the year. Well, um, if you look at it so, this way, sorry to interrupt you, but if you look at it this way, like he was the leading rusher. I think he was he got injured week. What was it? Seven? week seven or eight something like that somewhere in the middle of the year and and he led led all rushers through week like 11 he didn't run he wouldn't play for three or four games and still was the leading rusher he when he's on the field he's the dog he's a fantasy winner um you know he proved it last year and I think he's just he's just going to come back around this year and just be even better yeah definitely a good take over there now look taking a quick look at the the um the last ranked wide receiver in the top 10, we have Devonte Adams at nine. And then all the way up at six, we have Jamar Chase, kind of a name I wasn't expecting to be uh, so high. Jamar Chase, what do we think of that? I mean, this, I didn't even really, you know, I didn't follow college a whole lot. So I did not know that Jamar and Burrow were just going to be like that and just take over the mm-hmm. league last year. And I got to be honest, since seeing it, I'm, I'm a believer. I, I do like Jettas at five over Jamar Chase. Um, I, I think just 100%. the provenness of Jefferson. I think he's a better talent. Uh, I think Jamar has better chemistry with his QB. What do you think of that? Oh, I agree. I mean, when a national title coming in, no one expected that. Everyone was giving the Bengals crap for, you know, picking him over and, you know, an offensive tackle, you know, protect Joe Burrow and look how that turned out. Took him to the, um, took him to the Super Bowl. So I think they're going to bounce back just like that. Um, I don't know if I would have him at six just because, um, you know, there's obviously those scenarios where guys that break out years and fall off, you know, it's another high risk, high, high, high reward, in my opinion, but he's definitely a top 10 pick. Yeah, definitely. Um, just, just the chemistry between those two is insane. I mean, I played, uh, I played against Jamar in the championship last year and Jamar put up like 50, 60 points, some crazy. So just, just having that guy that can really just go out there and win you the week is is, is what lands you in the first round, being a guy who can really change your matchup. Um, moving on, kind of looking at uh, the upper echelon of these running backs here, what do you think of uh, the top three? So top three, they have obviously consensus. We can all agree Jonathan Taylor is going to be number one overall in every league. He should be best of line in the league. He's just a workhorse. They have no, no passing offense. You know, he receives the ball too. Um, with Matt Ryan there now, I think, you know, his arms weaker, he's going to be dumping it off just, just as much as, you know, I guess Carson Wentz last year. So I think he should, is the consensus number one, in my opinion. What do you think? Yeah. And I think Matt Ryan, uh, building off that has a lot to prove still. I think he, mm-hmm. I really hope at least that he's not just kind of mentally retired. I, I really hope that he goes to this Indianapolis team and just, just really has some fire and wants to prove to the world that, he is a guy who won an MVP. He is a guy who's been to a Super Bowl. So um, Jonathan Taylor, I think if you have the number one spot, you have to not overthink it. You probably got to play safe with Taylor. But uh, 
looking at uh, three and four with uh, McCaffrey Eckler. Now that one's tough for me because I think mm-hmm. I would have more shares of Eckler than McCa- McCaffrey at three. What do you think of that? I agree 100 percent. And honestly, I'm super high on Eckler. I I keep bouncing back and forth with taking him or Cooper Cup at number two. Um, I think, you know, Eckler, you mentioned before we even started recording that um, Austin Eckler, you know, wanted to lower his workload. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, he he had a light workload last last season. He he balled out. I think he's he's one of those guys where you take the risk at two or three and he's, he's going to be a fantasy changer. Um, in my opinion, just like how Cooper Cup was last year. Yeah, another just really exciting young offense over there in uh, San Diego. Mm-hmm. So Austin Eckler, definitely a top end PPR asset. Um, I got to say, I would take him over the Jefferson Chase 5-6. Uh, um, and honestly, I think I would take him over Cup at two. I really do. Mm-hmm. I think um, yeah. obviously Cup just amazing last year, but – I don't know. Is he going to do it again? Is he going to be a bust? Is I feel like he is the only name in the top 10, uh, just like for getting injuries. He, he has the most question marks just because he was last year's breakout. He was last year's league winner essentially. And I feel like all these other players have kind of, I mean, I guess Najee was a bit of a breakout last year, but mm-hmm. uh, it just feels like putting injury aside, a lot of these other, other picks seem a little safer, but maybe I'm just completely off the ball there. I mean, exactly. You have Justin Herbert, you know, just coming into his own, but it's just going to be his third year. Excuse me. He's, he's improving. He's going to be, I, in my opinion, he's going to be a top three fantasy quarterback this year. And then just being in one of those kind of high power offers offenses like LA was last year. Um, he's, I think he's just going to skyrocket. I mean, obviously with Cooper cup winning the triple crown last year, it's hard. It's really hard to pass up on it, but it's one of those things where I've learned the hard way, you know, Sometimes you got to go with your gut, and my gut says Eckler. Yeah, I, I definitely like that take. And uh, I guess just kind of ending off our first round, uh, the only person we didn't really touch on was Devontae Adams moving to a new team, uh, the Raiders. Devon, Devontae's – this is a tough one for me because I have um, – you know, I've had – I had really good success last year and the year before that, but I also had the Rodgers-Adams connection both years. That just really helped me out and uh, – Part of me thinks that Devontae moving on to the, the Raiders, he, he just might not be the same without Rodgers. That's that's kind of what I'm fearful of. Yeah, and that's – I mean, that's obviously valid, but a lot of people tend to forget the year that Derek Carr had last year. He was, you know, leading in passing yards for a good majority of the season, um, and he did it with, you know, last season was the season Henry Ruggs, you know, went out, and he was doing it with Darren Waller and Josh Jacobs. You know what I mean? He was still balling out. Um, they're both Derek Carr and um, Devontae Adams from the Fresno State. I'm pretty sure they played together. I'd have to look up on that. But, you know, even it's kind of – you can go back to kind of the Jamar Chase, um, Joe Burrow chemistry, you know, same school, same team. I think you can kind of bank that back with Devontae Adams and Derek Carr. Yeah. And I think I mean, he's – I think he's my sleeper first round. I think he's going to end up as a top five, top seven. Uh, top five is a stretch. I would say top seven, you know, asset. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be another one of the big make or breaks from the first round, just kind of seeing how Devontae lands in his new home. But hey, that's going to do it for our first round uh, look, a little insight. We're definitely going to dive a lot deeper. So make sure to stick around. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Check out the TikTok, the Instagram uh, links down below as well. Big shout out to Will, who uh, is going to be here a lot more often for the fantasy football. So yeah, uh, stick around. A lot more video coming out soon. Thank you all for watching. Bye-bye.